This experience happened in 2009, when I was working in a fast food restaurant. At that time, my income was far less than what fast food workers earn now, so my living situation was not ideal. It was during that time that something happened that changed the trajectory of my life. That night, one of my co-workers took a leave of absence and my supervisor decided to let me fill in for him. An hour into the shift, I encountered a customer with a bad attitude. He approached the register and ranted loudly, claiming that his order was missing one item and asking for free compensation. According to the company's rules, I asked him to present the purchase receipt. However, the customer told me that he had not received a receipt. I noticed that he smelled strongly of alcohol. I remained patient and tried to explain to him. But the customer became more and more irritable. He suddenly grabbed me and tried to pull me away from the checkout counter. Due to his large stature, I had no ability to resist. I felt a sharp pain in my chest. Two of my colleagues tried to pull this customer away from me. My breathing became increasingly difficult and my body felt extremely uncomfortable. Fortunately, two police officers suddenly appeared at the fast food restaurant. One of the officers took immediate action to subdue the man who attacked me, while the other officer quickly called the emergency services. Soon, an ambulance arrived. The paramedics carried me to the ambulance. At that point, my condition was very serious and I felt very scared and desperate. I was only 20 years old and I started crying because I didn't want to die, I felt young and had a lot of unfinished business. On the way to the hospital, I tried to calm down and think about my life and my future. I realized how fragile and precious life is. At the hospital, the doctors confirmed that I was experiencing a heart attack. They quickly took me to the operating room. As I was being wheeled into the operating room, my consciousness began to fade. I couldn't be sure how long I had been unconscious. While in the coma, I felt something pulling at my body. Then, I heard a very loud popping sound. I struggled to open my eyes and found myself floating on the ceiling of the operating room. Doctors and nurses were surrounding a monitor. I could see that my chest was fully opened and that the doctors were installing some kind of device there which I guessed might be a pacemaker implant or some other therapeutic device. My body was connected to various monitoring devices. My body was connected to various monitoring devices with wires and tubes intertwined. I watched the procedure carefully. Even though there seemed to be some discomfort, I was curious. The doctors and nurses looked very skilled. A mysterious tunnel suddenly appeared around me, and it emitted a dazzling light. I was pulled into this mysterious tunnel. As soon as I entered the tunnel, beautiful music came from inside. This beautiful melody surrounded me completely. This music brought me great relaxation. The scenery around the tunnel quickly flashed past me. A bright light appeared in front of me. Although the light was still far away from me, it illuminated the whole tunnel and made me feel a sense of peace like never before. I didn't know what was going to greet me next, but I was filled with wonder and anticipation of the unknown. After I entered that light, I found myself in a special room. Room is not an accurate description, as it had no doors or windows. It transcended my understanding of the physical world and could not be accurately described with words. In this mysterious space, I felt a strong wave of love. It was not the love we experience in our daily lives, not family or friendship. It was an immensely powerful and infinitely amplified love. As this love enveloped me, I felt completely accepted and understood. In that moment, I realized that the earth no longer mattered to me. 
I was overwhelmed by such intense love that it transcended all bonds. There is no place like this place. I was filled with awe and gratitude for this space. It has changed my perspective and made me realize the true meaning of life. I heard a voice say to me. Welcome to this place. I found no one in sight. I asked aloud, who are you? Where are you? Just a moment later, she suddenly appeared in front of me. She was wearing a long white robe with simple and elegant gold trim embellishing the cuffs and collar. She wore a flower on her head. She said to me, My dear, I am your great aunt and I will help you. Curious, I continued, Where is this place? She smiled and explained, This is a transit point from earth to heaven. A special place. This transit station seemed to transcend my previous perception of the world, it was a wonderful existence between reality and the surreal. I told my aunt that I didn't want to go back. She gently reminded me that now was not the time for me to stay here and that soon I would return to earth. Just then, another woman suddenly appeared in front of me. She was wearing the same clothes as my aunt, her hair was brown, and her eyes were very beautiful. I said to the woman, I think I know you. She looked at me and smiled, and her smile revealed a familiar and warm feeling. As she smiled, I felt the love in the room become stronger. She replied, Yes, you know me. You and I are soul mates and we have been through many things together. She told me about our relationship in a past life, when we had been a couple. She told me that we had lived together in a beautiful countryside. She and I had known each other at a very young age and we had spent our youth together. We decided to come together and become each other's partners when we were 19 years old. Our life was simple and full. Despite the lack of material affluence, we were filled with deep emotions and understanding. We worked hard together, striving to achieve our common dreams. When I was 22 years old, we welcomed our first child. We learned more deeply the meaning of love and responsibility as parents. Together we took care of our child's growth and gave him endless love and care. As time passed, we welcomed the arrival of our four children together. Although life was still difficult, we felt blessed beyond measure. However, at the age of 59, I suddenly passed away. Medical care was limited in those days, and we did not know exactly what I was suffering from. She smiled at me and said that our meeting now was not a coincidence, and that our souls were destined to meet again. Curious, I asked her why she had not met me again on earth. My aunt sensed my confusion. She told me that even though we were soul mates, sometimes our encounter was not entirely under our control in the endless cycle of the universe. Fate may cause us to miss each other and not meet in a particular time and space. The journey of the soul is complex and profound. There are many stages of learning and growth that we need to go through in our past lives. We need to aggregate these experiences and prepare for the journey ahead. As I was about to pursue this, the tunnel suddenly reappeared before me. My aunt told me that it was time for me to go back. Even though I didn't want to leave this place, I was dragged into the tunnel by invisible forces. I tried to struggle to stay and get back into the light again, however, I could not hold on to the edge of the tunnel. The light became blurrier and blurrier until it finally disappeared from my view. Through the tunnel, I re-entered the hospital room. As I looked up into the room, I noticed an angel standing next to the doctor. It was as if he was manipulating the doctor's hand through some kind of power. The doctor's movements were more focused and precise. I felt relaxed in the angel's light. I understood that I had been given a special blessing, 
regardless of the outcome of the operation. The angel said to me that you must grasp back into the body or you will lose this opportunity. I felt the urgency in his words, and I had to act quickly. I stared into the angel's eyes and said, please help me get back into my body, I understand the preciousness of this opportunity and I don't want to lose it. The angel nodded. He reached out his hand and gently touched my forehead. And at that moment a warm energy penetrated my whole body. I felt myself slowly begin to return, and my consciousness and body gradually merged together. I tried to concentrate and fully integrate my consciousness into my body. I felt the beating of my heart. I knew I was returning to the real world, to that body I knew so well. Darkness enveloped me, as if time had stopped. When I opened my eyes again, I found myself lying in another room. My body felt sore, as if I had experienced a strenuous workout. In the weeks that followed, I chalked up that experience to drug-induced hallucinations. Because it seemed so unreal, I couldn't believe for myself that it was actually happening. One day, when I was visiting my mother, I asked her if I had ever had an aunt. My mother pondered for a while and then told me that there was indeed an aunt, but she had passed away before I was born. I was shocked, I had never heard any stories about her. I told my mother that I had seen my aunt in another world. I described my aunt's appearance in detail. My mother chose to believe my words. She admitted that the character I described was very similar to my aunt's facial features. This fact surprised us both. This conversation reinforced my belief that the experience was not a hallucination, but a real one. I am grateful for my mother's understanding and acceptance, and her support gave me the courage to pursue my inner truth. From then on, I believe that my experience was real. It was a unique journey. For some time after that, I suffered from depression. I felt so intensely loved and yet turned away from that love. This experience made it hard for me to adjust to my life now. In order to seek help, I decided to go to a psychiatrist. The psychologist had an in-depth conversation with me and listened to what I was going through and feeling. Although he could not understand how I felt there, he would help me adjust my emotions. Although I still longed to return to the light during psychotherapy, I gradually realized that the process would take time and effort. Through psychotherapy, I learned to manage my emotions.